I'm Darius McDermott from Chelsea Financial Services, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Kay, who is the manager of the Comgest Growth Japan Fund. So it's good morning from me, and I believe good evening to you in Tokyo, Richard. Good evening, good morning, Darius. So let's talk about equities. Um, inflation is a global topic. Um, I think when we, 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 we spoke last with you, we talked about rising inflation and what it means for Japan, and that you thought that you know Japan would rebound with inflation. Here we are now in April, and inflation is certainly rife in the UK and the States. What's it like, and what what impact do you think it's happening on or having on Japan Japanese equities? Um, thank you very much for the question, Darius. Um, we have a little bit of inflation in Japan. Um, but but it's, a, it's a very different story from what you have in the UK and what we see in other economies. Um, the latest Bank of Japan estimate for inflation is about 1.3%. Um, I, I bet you will tell us for the days when the UK had 1.3% inflation. Um, I know that people on um, people who are struggling with, with, with their monthly pay package um, would love to have 1.3% inflation. Um, because um, the living cost, I think, in the UK and, and Western economies has risen. Japan does not really have that. Um, of, of course, we have global supply chain effects. Uh, we buy oil, um, lumber, um, uh, freight capacity from the same places everywhere else. Um, but yeah. the, the, the endemic um, inherent inflation capacity of, of Japanese economy remains very weak. Uh, we, we have an aging population that doesn't buy houses and, and cars. Um, the economy is normalizing, rebounding anyway, really, thanks to the post-pandemic um, effects uh, and the fact that um, the market has really, um, the, the, the shops, the, the restaurants have really reopened in the last few quarters. Um, but, but, but inflation per se is somewhat limited. Yeah. And just talking, sticking with Japan equities as an, age, an area of focus, I mean, 2021 was a difficult area for Asian markets generally, and Japan no exception. Uh, why, why, why Japan now? Um, exactly as you say, last year was difficult, and in fact, we had um, uh, the, the lowest trading volume in, on the Tokyo Stock Exchange uh, for 22 years last year, uh, because uh, foreign investors were, were somewhat getting out of the markets um, and, um, and, and we didn't get back in before the end of the year. Um, that is also a reason why now. That is also a reason why uh, Japan must be looked at because um, it remains a major market with enormously uh, strong global companies. And because of that exit of foreign money, those stocks are inexpensive. Uh, so if I look at our own portfolio, we are one of the lowest uh, price earnings ratios for the fund during the 14 years that we've run it. Uh, some specific stocks, um, the story is even more extreme than that. Uh, so, so that's why Japan, uh, because you can buy great uh, companies in a rebounding economy um, at unprecedentedly low valuations. That's interesting. Are you seeing the return of some of that, capital, that foreign capital? Is that starting to come back into the market? As a matter of fact, we are, um, Darius, in the month of March, uh, we had quite strong flows into our own strategy, I'm, I'm very grateful to say. Um, and, and across the overall market, the Tokyo Stock Exchange um, figures for weekly trade volume uh, show a very strong rebound by foreigners, um, really, again, from the end of March, uh, continuing into April, um, after a pretty boring uh, sort of January, February um, uh, picture from them. So, so, yes, there is a rebound. We see it anecdotally. We see it across the market. Really interesting. Another sector that I often talk with Japanese managers about is tourism. And um, let's dig into one of your stocks in the fund, which is Oriental Land, which owns and operates the uh, Disney Tokyo Resort. Is, are, are you seeing and expecting a, a big pickup in, in tourism? And maybe just touch on that, that stock a little bit as, as a reopening type trade. In Japan? Um, yes, uh, it's a major theme, um, Darius, and uh, we have about six or seven companies in the fund really which will benefit from the recovery of tourism and, and normal retail traffic. Uh, but, but the one that you mentioned, Oriental Land Corporation or Tokyo Disneyland, is probably the biggest beneficiary. And, and yes, that story is happening right now. Uh, my daughter went to Disneyland, or actually Disney Sea. They have two separate parks, Disney Sea 
uh, with her friends two weeks ago for the first time since 2020 February. Um, yeah. She'd wanted to go before, but she couldn't get in because you have to buy tickets online because of um, um, entry restrictions. And she finally got to go in. Um, many people are like my daughter. Uh, the company actually gives us figures on the the rejection ratio, um, and, and it's enormous. You know, many people are still trying to get in, but they can't. Um, but, but, but Disneyland is gradually uh, raising the, the entry uh, numbers, uh, and, and because of the removal of um, pandemic restrictions, generally uh, that um, that raising of restrictions is, is very easy. Um, Oriental Land, in fact, reported earnings figures not long ago, and, and the figures were already close to um, pre-pandemic levels. Uh, even though visitor numbers were down, the visitors that go spend more. Um, and uh, my daughter, I can sadly affirm, is one of those who's spending more. Uh, so, so this company is going to do, I think, really very well um, as traffic normalizes. Um, in addition to that, it's expanding the park space by about 30%, sticking a lot of new rides. Um, and um, we see a very fruitful um, coming few years for that company's earnings in, in Japan. And again, just expanding on that pre-pandemic, I think there was a lot of inter-Asian tourism, which Japan benefited, benefited from, particularly from China. Do, do you see that sort of accelerating across the rest of the year and maybe into next? Um, it's the last piece of the puzzle. Um, everything else in Japan has reopened with surprising speed, really from the end of March when the government ended the uh, sort of emergency declaration um, and, and, and restaurants had no more restrictions on their operating hours or serving alcohol or anything like that. Local Disneyland could um, uh, remove a lot of its entry restrictions and so on. But, but tourism from overseas is the one puzzle uh, piece that remains. Um, but that too was seeing dramatic change. Uh, I think as recently as three weeks ago, foreigners could not enter the Kingdom of Japan, unless you were a resident. I mean, uh, now they can if they have a, a business reason or a family reason. Um, that itself is, is a dramatic transformation uh, versus the last two years. Um, and yes, we think that um, normal tourism, probably with, with some restrictions, maybe people have to be in groups or something like this, um, will be liberalized um, surprisingly quickly. Thank you, Richard. And let's just talk a little bit about ESG. Um, I'm aware that the fund reports both its carbon footprint and environmental footprint on the fact sheet this month. Is ESG a significant part of the process um, and, and the way you operate on, on this fund? It is. And ESG is really the, the warp and woof of, of what we do um, at Comdist and, and what we do in this fund for Japan at Comdist specifically. Um, and, and the reason we say that is that um, on, on the process side, ESG um, hits our work from day one. Uh, we have screenings that are um, based on ESG criteria uh, for, for the stocks that we want to look at. Uh, we have an ESG um, template uh, report that we have to uh, fill out on, on companies that we are researching. Um, and, um, and, and then ESG um, continues again on the process side, uh, even after we bought a company and, and we engage with a company um, regularly. Um, but more importantly, um, ESG is, is, is our thinking. Uh, because we've always been people who want to invest in, in sustainable and replicable stories. Um, we want to invest in companies that, that really are excited about what they do and how they can help society and, and the world. And, and that's all ESG is. Um, and so the process that we that we described fits in very naturally with, with the spirit of, of the investing that we, we've done at Congress really since inception. And, and the Japan Fund actually offers many opportunities like that with, with companies that, that speak our language. Richard, thank you very much for your time this evening uh, in Tokyo and this morning here in London. For more information on the Comgest Growth Japan Fund, please do visit chelseafs.co.uk.